What up, sunshine? I'm Coy Wire. It's March 6, and it's hashtag Your Word Wednesday. So listen up to see if your word was selected to broaden our vocabulary and make it into today's show. We start with news about pollution on and around our planet. According to a new report by the International Energy Agency, global pollution from energy sources like coal, oil, and natural gas hit record high levels last year, with emissions rising more than 1% across the world. One factor contributing to this increase was extreme drought that restricted hydropower production in some countries, which in turn increased reliance on fossil fuels. Another component was a surge in energy demand in China as the second largest country in the world by population ended its COVID-19 lockdowns last year. But it's not all bad news. According to the report, U.S. expansion of clean energy sources cut emissions in the country by a little more than 4%, while European Union's energy emissions fell by almost 9%. And China made massive gains in its solar and wind power use as well. But scientists say pollution levels need to be cut further to help hold companies accountable for any egregious pollution levels and to quantify their contribution to global warming, a U.S.-based nonprofit environmental defense fund launched a new satellite that locates and measures methane leaks. CNN's Bill Weir has more. Three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of nine. Paid for by the likes of billionaire Jeff Bezos and other donors. The nonprofit Environmental Defense Fund just launched a new kind of eye in the sky. Vehicle just gun range. Methane Sat is designed to circle the Earth every 95 minutes or so, and with cutting edge detail, spot plumes and leaks of planet cooking pollution long associated with the production of natural gas. If carbon dioxide is a blanket of average thickness overheating the Earth for centuries, methane is like a blanket seven feet thick with over 80 times the heat-trapping power of CO2 for about two decades after its release. Sometimes it leaks from old equipment or orphan wells, and sometimes when there's no one to buy it, companies just burn it in a practice known as flaring. What we found here in the Permian Basin is that operators are wasting enough gas to heat about 2 million homes a year. In 2021, EDF took us up over the oil and gas fields of Texas to sniff out methane leakers with a specially equipped airplane. So this is carbon dioxide down here? Yeah. And this is methane. But now they can fly over every oil and gas basin in the world, where 80% of global supplies are fracked and pumped. We can basically create a movie of what's going on with respect to methane emissions. Before, we could just take snapshots when we had a plane in the air and we can get permission to fly. This is a whole new game. It really creates um, an enormous leap forward in our ability to really understand greenhouse gas emissions. While other satellites can spot methane, what they find is often kept private. But EDF says that in about 18 months, their data will be open and free on Google Earth Engine for anyone to see. You just have a real clarity now, a clarity we've never had before. And I think people realize you don't have to accept um, what somebody says, whether that's a government or a company. You can actually directly look at it, see what it is, and that is completely different than anything we've ever had for greenhouse gases. What I refer to is we're going to have radical transparency. And what has been the response from big oil and gas companies that you're doing this? Well, I think many of the companies see this as a real opportunity because they, they really do believe and, and I suspect they're right that they're doing a good job, but many of them aren't. It gives countries and companies the tools to select who they buy gas from and where that gas comes from. So the first time they'll have the ability to make really informed decisions. And those informed decisions will have an enormous positive impact on the climate. Pop quiz hot shot, which Sesame Street character was not in the original cast of the show's first episode? Cookie Monster, Kermit the Frog, Grover, or Big Bird? If you said Grover, rise up. This character appeared later in season one as a dark green furry monster, but he was redesigned with blue fur and given his current voice and personality in the second season. Our next story, we're gonna focus on the economy as the White House has announced a set of measures this week to fight what they are calling corporate ripoffs. These efforts are aimed at cracking down on unfair and illegal pricing across numerous industries. Federal regulators are also announcing rules to eliminate excessive credit cards 
card late fees and junk fees. These are rules that the financial industry opposes, arguing they are prioritizing short-term political gain over long-term benefits of consumers. But the economy is on many people's minds, and these latest efforts come as more and more people are frustrated by shrinkflation, which is when companies decrease the quantity of a product you get, say, the number of cookies you'd usually get in a box, while still keeping prices the same. It's become so prevalent that even Sesame Street's Cookie Monster posted about it, complaining about how egregious the business practice has become. So why is shrinkflation resonating in public discourse? CNN's Vanessa Yurkiewicz and Sarah Seidner serve up some potential answers to Cookie Monster's frustrations. Do not mess with Cookie Monster's cookies. <laughs> but a lot of Americans agree. He's talking about something called shrinkflation. And this is what we see when corporations shrink the product size to avoid raising prices further. Research has indicated that consumers are actually more okay with smaller products than higher prices. But essentially, if you look at cookie prices over the past two years or so, for about a pound of cookies, you see that the price started about 370 for a pound it's all the way up to 502 a pound and in the last year according to a study by uh, Senator Bob Casey in just the last year we've seen cookie pr uh, products shrink by six percent and so you have everyone now jumping on this conversation with cookie monster who said me hate shrinkflation <laughs> me cookies are getting smaller you have President Biden who actually uh, the White House retweeting Chim about this chiming in saying C is for consumers getting ripped off. You have everyone from Sherrod Brown from Ohio saying that his constituents are absolutely sick of shrinkflation. And you have Elizabeth Warren and you have Bob Casey saying that they actually have a bill for this. They want the FTC to crack down on corporations that are shrinking their products while keeping prices the same, if not higher. Surprising fact that paper goods has actually seen the biggest shrinkflation mm. in the last few years. And you also have the worry about something called greedflation. This is essentially when corporations may see prices softening on some of their products, but yeah. still keep the product smaller. And that is what we do not want to see. We want to see corporations keeping up with changing prices. That's probably a tweet uh, best left for Oscar the Grouch uh, instead of <laughs> I Cookie was Monster. When he, was gonna weigh in. he might weigh in soon, <laughs> but you clearly have, even though he's a Sesame Street character, Cookie Monster really tapping into something that many Americans are seeing and feeling right now. For today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, a new take on an age old question. Why did the chicken cross the road? This time it's a goat. Actually, a lot of them. Our Jeremy Roth shows us the gallivanting barn animals that went on an egregious journey. Here's some crazy caught on cam video captured in Texas after a herd of goats got loose and then got moving. Go goats, go. You know, I feel like this story deserves the old pun meter don't you? I know what you're thinking, you goat to be kidding me. Okay, here we go. After the herd, which was hired to clear weeds, went on the lamb, Arlington police responded and weren't sheepish, instead taking the bull by the horns and rounding up the roving silly bellies without further incident. They didn't even have to use their battering ram. You heard it here first. Five, six, seven, seven puns. Not bad. <laughs> That counts too, by the way. You're a bad man, Jeremy Roth. That was absolutely wonderful. Hey, Mrs. Taylor's class at Ascend Leadership Academy in Sanford, North Carolina, you are today's hashtag Your Word Wednesday winner for egregious, an adjective meaning outstandingly bad, shocking, or flagrant. Our cat Jennings loves this word so much she put it into the show three times today. Well done. All right, we are showing some love today. Keene Middle School in Keene, New Hampshire. Shout out to the Cardinals. Go on and dust your feathers off. You're looking so fresh and so keen, keen. And this shout out goes to another school with lots to flaunt, Rutland High School in Rutland, Vermont. Rise up. See you tomorrow, lovely people. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.